let us begin the class with the topic morphology now in the earlier classes we have seen syntax semantics which are the branches of uh, linguistics likewise morphology is also a branch of linguistics which deals with the study of words now this word is being taken from a latin word and the meaning of morph you can just divide this into two and morph means form or change whereas ology means the study of some things now we have in many other subjects like uh, zoology cytology ecology where they study about something else for example zoology study of animals likewise this morphology is a study of words now all the syllables when they are put together you form a word and when the words are put together they form a sentence so in a sentence we try to identify the minimal unit of a word in a sentence so the minimal unit or the smallest word in a sentence is called as morphemes the definition for morphem is the minimal unit of a word in a sentence is called as morphemes now morphemes are of two types we have this free morphem and bound morphem now what are free morphems free morphems are words which can stand on their own to give meaning for example car bag ball dog anything which gives meaning it need not depend upon another word to give meaning on its own likewise bound morphem is a word which cannot stand on its own to give meaning so it has to depend upon another word to give meaning one example which i have shown here is unrooted now this root is a base you can just put it in any form you can call it as base or root or stem so this root which is a base can stand on its own to give meaning so you can call it as free morphem when you add this un and ed to it it becomes a bound morphem this un is the prefix you add a prefix you add a prefix before the word or in front of the word and you add a suffix after the word or at the end of the word and both these prefix and suffixes are called as affixes so any any affixes which has to depend upon a stem or a root or a base word is called as bound morphem so it cannot stand on its own i hope it is clear and uh, coming to the free morphem again you can find the tree diagram here with a very crystal clear explanation free morphem is like you have uh, two categories under it lexical morphem and functional morphem now lexical morphems are words which can give meaning it is like uh, the content the content of the word can be understood and uh, there comes the parts of speech like verbs or nouns or adjectives and adverbs one example which i can just give you is the car so car is a lexical which gives a meaning that it is a four wheeler four wheeler vehicle now coming to this functional uh, morphem functional morphems are closed class they just talk about or they just give the functional a uh, grammatical function they give the grammatical function conjunctions pronouns pr preposition and articles come under this category where they cannot give a content meaning whereas the grammatical meaning of a word alone can be under functional morphems now this is a open class where you can add any number of words which can give meaning whereas this is a closed class where you just talk about only the grammatical part now coming to bound morphems there are it is of two categories derivational and inflectional now coming uh, when we talk about this derivational it is also similar to that of uh, lexical uh, um morphem which gives meaning which gives meaning in the sense react for one example i've just taken react you can have this uh, act alone it can stand on its own and give meaning but instead you have this word re 
before it you can add some more words you can just coin a number of words by adding or it becomes reactor it becomes reactor so likewise we can just keep on adding any prefix or a suffix to a word and we can generate any number of words out of it now inflectional morphemes inflectional morphemes are of eight types in english uh, you can just see the possessive uh, um, i mean possessive form of it the plural form it for example as i have taken a simple example cat when you add s to it it is in the plural form so inflectional morphemes are morphemes or are of eight types the uh, plural form possessive form uh, comparative and um, superlative as well as tense also we have this past tense adding ed to it or uh, adding d to it to any any word for that matter for example work now this work you add ed to it and uh, you have another um, past participle present participle so all these eight inflectional morphemes does the function that is like grammatical part of it you don't have the content meaning there you don't have the content meaning here whereas what is the main difference between a free morpheme and a bound morpheme is it can stand on its own to give meaning it cannot stand on its own to give meaning it has to depend upon prefix or a suffix to give meaning on its own the rest of it we'll see in the next class